I'm Marissa in Salt Lake City, Utah, and you're watching what I'm doing right now. Right, dog? Right. Callie Dishman. Ooh. New toy for you. Yes, it's Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's the Zoom F8. I'm excited to see how that thing works. Okay, bye. bye. All right, we need to make a decision on uh, what kind of uh, uh, banner things we want. It's a maximum of 102 inches by 129 inches. What's, that, what's the math on that? Mm -hmm. Why don't you know these things? Mm -hmm. I ain't no robot. You just looked at the Asian kid because you think he's good at math? Yeah, what's that? Uh, that's well, not that's bad. not what I was doing, but... <laughs> Oh, uh, that's, that's big. <laughs> <laughs> what I need to do is, let me turn this TV on. You know what's funny is that if we're using that television, we don't have six screens for every <laughs> <laughs> These banners here, we're going to copy the language that was in the books as far as services. For that text right there, do we like, we create experiences, we make experiences, we build experiences. Building sounds like a, a, a yeah. bigger, heavier, stronger word than make. Yeah, we build experiences. We constitute experiences. <laughs> we forge experiences. We initiate experiences. I don't like that one. I, I like to like forge better. We forge. <laughs> I'm a blacksmith. <laughs> we have the banners set up to give us more real estate to show stuff. I could see us using one of the banners to just like kind of in big block letters list out services so that when people come up asking, what do you do? There's a big thing right there that's like video, audio, illustration. Sure. Okay. Could just, just like have one of these that's all the services and then the other that is just the logo and we could stick that at the end of the table there or wherever it fits. Mm. I may have talked before about how for me, in the process of running a business, 2017 felt like the year of learning the value of mission statements. So for your company, you have a mission statement and that mission statement informs every decision that gets made. If you have to decide on something, you can measure the options against your mission statement and decide which of those brings us closest to what we're really actually trying to do. But not only does it help to have mission statements for a company, but also each individual project. So like, what's the mission statement for what I'm doing right now? What's the mission statement for Kate Tectonics? What's the mission statement for Cut to the Tech? And just like with the company, each of those smaller mission statements tied to those projects helps inform every decision that gets made about that project. And you can go even further. Subtasks within a larger project can have mission statements. And so at each level, you're asking the question, why? Why does this company exist? Why does this project exist? Why are we doing this particular task in this project? And what I really think that helped the company do is sort of focus in on the things that are important and push to the side things that don't help us get to where we're trying to get. 2018 so far feels like it's shaping up to be the year of coming to understand overhead. And that's everything that has to happen that isn't work that enables the work to happen. So when this company was just say, Michael Morgan, myself, and we had Logan out here helping us run the vlogs. With just three people, it's not as complicated to communicate. It's not as complicated to understand what's going on, where certain projects are in their production process, and what needs to be done next. As the number of people at this company has grown, it has become increasingly important to spend more time just organizing things because there's so many moving parts and in the process of delegating tasks to different departments or different people, it's important that there's some kind of like central brain information super center that knows what everything is doing or that knows how everything fits together. Every February, we have what we call the Cinema Summit 
where everybody who works here gets together and talks about what we've done over the past year, where we are now, and where we want to get in the following year. So in preparation for this meeting that's happening on Sunday, this week has been all about organizing all of our information in ways that make sense, that are easily accessible by the people who need that information, and enable us to stay on top of to-do lists for each of our projects prioritized by what needs to get done first. To give you an idea of what this all looks like, this is a program that we use called Airtable. If you've ever used Trello or Favro, it can do similar things. If you have used those programs, this view might look more familiar. You can look at things like this where you've got different cards, like the Christmas Vision 2018 video right now is in the planning process. And uh, after we're done planning and it goes into the writing process, you know, that card can get moved over here. And over time it moves through writing and production, editing and publishing, and then it's done. But we can also look at this same data in a spreadsheet form where we have each episode down here and what date that video should be published and uh, an episode summary of what that might look like and an episode summary of what that video will have in it. So out here you can see all the different, they're called bases. And before this week, we had very few of these. Most everything that we were trying to keep track of was just in the operations base. So all these tabs along the top were just all these different uh, air tables of stuff we were trying to keep track of and it got really messy. And we also hadn't really drilled into uh, what different priority levels meant. So we had things that were priority one or priority five, priority three, priority two, priority five. I had it like, without defining what those numbers mean, it can be hard to decide, well, which number is it? So what we've been doing this week is pulling a lot of that information out of the operations base and putting it into bases that are more finely directed at what that particular project is. So now if there are tasks related to Kate Tectonics, for example, we can come to the Kate Tectonics base and find just the to-dos that are related to that project. And we've also settled on a way to prioritize individual tasks. That priority system is based on something called the Eisenhower matrix, where you divide your tasks into one of four boxes. You've got things that are important and urgent in this box things that are important but not urgent in this box, things that are unimportant and urgent in this box, and things that are unimportant and not urgent in this box. And using that, you can focus on only the tasks in box number one first, and then move on to two, and then three, and then four. Generally, four is stuff that is unimportant enough that you can take it off your list entirely. So now here, when we're selecting the priority for something, we have options one through four that correspond to those particular boxes, and I'm gonna say that this thing is important and urgent. And lastly, one important change that we made to the way that we we're organizing stuff is that we come up with a lot of ideas, and we were dumping all of our ideas into the same base where we were tracking the things that we're actively working on. And so it got really cluttered up between things that we're trying to do right now and things that we wanna do later. So we made a separate base called idea box where anything that we have an idea for can just go in there and it doesn't clutter up the areas where we're trying to track real progress of projects that we're trying to push through now. So as we move forward, whenever we feel like we have resources, be it time, money, or people to make new things happen, we can just delve down here into our idea box and uh, find something that we're all excited to work on and bring it out into its own base where we can start tracking real progress with really granular to-do lists with real deadlines. Organization is something that this company has struggled with for a long time. And I really believe that that is almost entirely my fault because for my whole entire life, I've been really bad at organization. And every small business that I've had the opportunity to see up close, it has become very apparent that the leader of that organization imbues their traits, good and bad, into the company culture. So unfortunately, that means that I have imbued my company with disorganization and a general disregard for deadlines. Bringing Abby on board last year was, I think, our first step to fixing that problem. And she has put forth this Herculean effort to drag Todd and myself along into this world of organization and deadlines and to-dos and charts 
and spreadsheets. And in 2018, it feels like we're really building on the success that we had in 2017. And I'm really excited for the ways that we are going to be productive in 2018 that we were not able to achieve in 2017, definitely 2016 and before that. I was telling Michael Morgan the other day about how I feel that for all of the potholes that cinema has stepped in in the process of learning how to business, the one thing that we've always been really good at is learning from our mistakes and continuously improving over time. I cannot think of a problem that we've had that has not gotten better over time after we realized that it was a problem and focused on making it better. And that feels really good because there's no hubris involved in this company. Everybody who works here is interested in being the best they can in improving over time. And to be able to do that, you have to throw your ego out the window. You have to be willing to accept that you aren't always going to have the best ideas or take the best courses of action. So if I can just pat myself on the back for a second and pat Todd's back and pat Abby's back and Michael Morgan's back, as we've hired more people, I think we've done a really good job of finding people who also feel that way about achieving the highest level possible to the expense of personal feelings. What this means for you is that you'll be getting more better stuff on a more regular schedule. And I hope that's already been apparent in the upload schedule of these vlogs. Right now, because we only have one person working on them, we've fallen into kind of like a upload every weekday, but not on the weekend schedule. And as soon as we can get another person in there to help, we can really get into that seven days a week rhythm. And I think that's gonna be important for maintaining the community, for attracting new people to the community, and for making everybody feel like the money that they give on Patreon is worth it. In the past, when our production process has gotten gummed up for whatever reason, it's just killed me inside to know that people gave money on Patreon and two or three weeks would go by without a video going live on the channel. But it really feels like those kinds of production problems are a 2017 cinema problem and not something that's going to happen now. And that's very exciting. Progress is exciting. This company has grown from something that was like, maybe this will be fun to do, let's try it and see what happens, to something that I really feel is poised for great success. Todd talks about all the time how we have the right people in place. We have a lot of extremely talented, kind-hearted, wonderful, open-minded people. And they're all helping us to build something that allows us to make money while also expressing creative freedom and helping people become more curious about the world. And that's all just really exciting. So for all of you who have been here for a while, I hope it's been at least interesting, if not fun, to see this thing grow from nothing. And if you're new here, I hope that starting from now to whatever it becomes in the future is exciting and illuminating.